Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us, ready to buy, to the number on the screen. Starting pricing for low-end software, $100, and starting pricing for high-end software, $500. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal buyer's protection guarantee. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Beta. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Beta. Oh, oh, oh. Making technical difficulties. What's going on, man? I'm here. What's going on with you guys, man? I'm here. I'm in here. Yes, I am. What's going on with y'all, man? Glad to have the family in here. What's going on with you? Hope you guys had a great week. I'm very late, but y'all got to understand what we're going through out here in Southern California. Yes, I am late, but I'm here. We got a, <laughs> a, a hurricane going on out here in California, man. Boy, this weather... We got a hurricane going. But I'm here, man. Glad to have y'all tuning in, man. What's up, man? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I'm out here in very wet SoCal. Where are my SoCal people, man? Where are my Southern California people? Well, y'all know it's going down out here right now. Man, it is crazy right now, man. You know, and what's we got this weather and everybody, you know, around the country, they've been talking about the weather out here because, you know, we had a hurricane um, warning. Now it's a tropical storm out here. And, um, you know, we were kind of taking it lightly for a minute. I'm going to be real out here in California. We was kind of taking it lightly like a hurricane. Man, blah, whatever. I'm about to go to Roscoe's and get me some chicken. We were kind of taking it lightly. Yeah, we were like, it ain't about to be, you know, it ain't a hurricane, it ain't gonna be no hurricane out here. It ain't gonna be no tropical storm, man. This LA, this California, you know, we we were like, whatever, until it hit. <laughs> then we start getting them warnings on the phone, and all of a sudden, hey, let me go to Walmart and stock up on some spam and some some pig feet and some beans. Yeah, it got real serious real fast out here. Oh, people start hitting up Walmart and Costco real quick. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the weather, man, it was a, a hurricane, then there was a tropical storm, then it hit, and then parts of the desert places started flooding, like Palm Springs is flooding, and they had seals. Did y'all see one of them cities out here in, in California? The seals got the hell out the ocean. Y'all see that? You know, animals, they can sense danger. The seals got the hell out the water, nigga. The seals were sitting at Starbucks drinking a latte and shit. We're trying to warn us. Get your ass out there in seal talks and get your ass out the water. That was in Monterey, right? Well, let me show y'all where the seals were. They had, the seals got the hell out the water, dude. Hold on. Where is that? Um, oh. Man, man, man. Yeah, man, those seals got the hell on. Where is that? 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 It seems like we do not want none of that 
Okay. Um, yeah, this was on YouTube. They come on shore right here. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is in Monterey. Let me show y'all real quick. This is in Monterey. The seals got the hell out the water, man. <laughs> So the seals, is, they're trying to warn us what's happening. Yeah, the seals try to let us know what's going on. What's up, Black Voltron in the house? Shout out to Black Voltron. So, yeah, man. So it, it, it hit. Boy, that water hit. That rain hit. Oh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I'm, I'm messing up. Where we at? Where we at? Right, where we at? There we go. So, yeah, man. The rain hit. And we got a hurricane, tropical storm. Their seals then jumped out the water. Then on top of all that, on top of the, the rain, and then there's flooding in the desert areas. There's a, 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 a West Coast hurricane, which never happens. And right in the middle of all of this, a damn 5.2 earthquake pop up on our ass. Dude. Right in the middle of a hurricane, tropical storm, flood, um, seal swarm, a damn earthquake pop up, dude. I'm sitting at the crib. It's raining like crazy. All of a sudden, I'm like, what the hell? Boom, boom, boom. I'm rocking. <laughs> what the hell? I know this is not a damn earthquake, man. Man. That bears climbing trees, yeah, and it, it, it's going down out here, man. It's insane. So California is like, look, we, I'm, we just need to reset. We need to reset. Um, the The Earth is trying to tell us something in California. The Earth is trying to shake it up and say, hey, we need that's the reparation shake. We got to get those reparations. Yeah. That's the reparation shake. Like, hey, y'all, give them FBAs what they need. Huh? <laughs> but we're, we're good, man. We're out here good. We're just trying to, you know, you know, ride this thing out. And, you know, we, we're good. We're good. Um, the, they just sent an alert where the kids are out of school. You can't go to school tomorrow. They're telling everybody to stay put um, because, you know, you never know what happens, man. Things are flooding here and there. These It's insane. So everybody's chilling and people are rushing to the store. I just, I went to um, the local Ralph's grocery store to, um, had to grab some fruit and stuff like that when I was out and about. And um, a lot of people are kind of rushing, especially a lot of old folks too. A lot of old people are getting scared. And I parked my car and there was an old white lady parked right next to me. And she was real frail. She was like kind of panicked. Can you help me? <laughs> she was trying to get her groceries. She was very frail. This white woman was about 90 something. She said, like, can you help me? I can't lift my bag in my trunk. She couldn't lift her. She was very frail. It was, I'm like, well, how come she ain't in a nursing home or something? Like that kind of frail. But I guess she was in the crib chilling and everything kind of, you know, she got spooked out. So she's like, hey, let me go to the store and stock up on some stuff. And, um, you know, she it was so much stuff she was trying to stock up on, she could barely lift it. So she asked me to help. I helped her. I helped her. I wasn't going to be messed up in the game. I, I helped her. No, 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 no. I, I, if I'm lying, I'm flying. No, I'm, I'm dead ass. I'm dead ass. No, if I'm lying, I'm flying. No, I dead ass. It was an old white woman. I did help her out. No, no, that's real facts. I did help her out. I wasn't going to be, you know, whatever. She looked like she could have been racist back in the day, but I helped her. I helped her, you know. But one thing, I did get a little nervous because she wanted me to hold her purse. She's like, can you help with my purse? You know, put the bags in the car. And I'm holding this white woman's purse. I'm like, oh, this ain't no setup. I did think that now. I was holding this old white woman's purse, and I'm like, I don't want this to be a Marion Barry moment. Like, the bitch set me up. And somebody said she's probably really 32 years old. So I didn't want her to, you know, I'm, I'm holding her purse for her. 
And I didn't want her to, you know, she could have just at any moment, oh, this nigga just robbed me. It's a flash mob. She could have pulled one of them. But she had a big, heavy ass. Her purse was heavy as shit. I don't know what she had in there. This woman had a very heavy purse. No, it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. She was trying to zap my energy, but I helped her put her stuff in the car. She had, she had a cane and the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah, held her purse. Yeah, her purse was real heavy. Look, the the nigga in me wanted made me want to look in there for about a split second. Like the nigga in me made me want to look in there for about a split second, but I didn't do it. Like this woman got a lot of how much money this woman got. <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna look in this woman's purse. Let me help her and go on in the store and do what I need to do. But for about two seconds, I I wanted to peek in there real quick and just to see how much she was holding. Because <laughs> the purse was heavy. But yeah, it, it's getting crazy out here. Yeah, she probably had a bunch of change in there. Yeah. Yeah, she probably had a, a bunch of change in there or a big black dildo or some shit in there. Because, you know, them old white women, you don't know what they do. Yeah, my, my fingerprints on there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because she couldn't say somebody tried to snatch her purse and my fingerprints on there. Because y'all know they got all the smash and grabs out here. And I, and I keep telling people about those smash and grab robberies. They keep trying to blame black people for them. And by the way, we're, we're a lot of people are coming in the room. Everybody share this on Twitter. Share this on your other social medias. Share this on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen. You think? Hold on. Share this, ladies and gentlemen. Share this. No, a white woman did try to give me a tip one time. Um, I told y'all about that before. A white woman was trying to put air in her tire or something like that, and I, I just helped her put some air in her tire. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm just going to give you something. And she gave me $5. I said, okay, there you go. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> she gave me a $5 tip. You know. <laughs> All right. She didn't notice what I drove up there in, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, think, I think she did see my car. She probably think I was, I was a valet. She probably thought I was a valet. This, this couldn't possibly be this Negro's car. He must work for a valet or something. But she gave me $5 for helping her put some air in her tire. And she gave it to me like, boy, I was supposed to be grateful. I'm like, oh, this is an old school white woman. She gave it to me like I'm supposed to be, oh, thank you, Miss Daisy. You need me to drive you somewhere else? I can drive you to the Piggly Wiggly if you need me to now, Miss Daisy. Anything you need, Miss Daisy. She kind of had that, like I'm supposed to be that. Okay, ma'am, thank you for your five dollars. Uh, okay. Not interested. No. <laughs> oh, it's what it is. <laughs> yeah. You gave me five whole dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the Bentley this nigga drove up in, that can't be his. He must be a valet. He must work for the golf course that's around the corner. That cannot be his car. You know. But here, Negro, here's five dollars. Go ahead and return that car. Here you admit, Daisy. I can drive you too if you need me to now. <laughs> There's a Win Dixie right up the corner. I just go on up there and run in there for you real quick and get you some peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but listen, oh Burner Boy, oh God, I get on Burner Boy in a minute. I get on Burner Boy later. But everybody, let folks know that we're in here live. Let folks know that we are in here live. A lot of stuff we're gonna talk about on tonight's show, and we're still in the process of um doing this film. We're doing the documentary. We're doing some more filming. I'm gonna be in Texas this week. Going to be traveling around some more. Where are my East Coast people? Because um, we're, we're, we're doing a lot of fast filming around the country, and we need some secondary cameras. Um, where are my cats on the East Coast, especially in the South, like Florida, Atlanta, around that area? 
Where my guys, where my camera guys, some of my, my filmmakers, man. Because um, we, we kind of need some of you guys to help us out. Some of my guys who are filmmakers or, or DPs. Um, and you got like a red cam. So which one of y'all got a, like a, the red cam package? All right. Holla at me, man. Y'all email me, man. If you're on the East Coast and you got the red cam package, we need some secondary cameras for some of our film sets. So um, email me, man. My email is info at Tariq.LA. Info at Tariq.LA. If you got the red cam package, email me. And if, if you're out there on the East Coast and you're able to travel, because we do need some, again, we need some secondary cams for some of these shots. And I got camera crews flying all over with me. And um, some of you brothers out there, y'all holler at me. Just holler at me if you got... I don't like the black magic. No, no, no. I, I do not like how the black magic looks. People try to say, oh, the black magic is just as good as the red. I don't like how the black magic looks, man. Neither does my editor. He don't like it. You know, it's, it's, we, I don't like the way it looks. I don't like the black magic. I, I like the red cam because we're shooting in like 6K. We, we're shooting in very high resolution for this documentary. We're shooting in very, very high resolution. Yeah. You know? Right, that's what I'm saying. Someone's at four or five K, man. Damn that, we up to six K and eight K right now, dude. This is what I'm talking about. We're doing six K and eight K. We're shooting in very high resolution right now. Yeah. Yeah, red is the way to go, man. I don't. That, I do all my stuff in red, man. That that's what they shoot, you know, Hollywood films with. You know. But um. Yeah, we're gonna be all we're gonna be around the country this week. We're gonna be around the country this week. So all of my yeah, the red cam is very expensive. Yes, it is. Well, yeah, the red dragon. Yeah, that's my guys are using the red dragon cams. Yes, there's a six K. Yes, indeed. We're shooting on six K right now. Yep. But um. You know what? I might be back in New York because there's a couple of other people. Now a lot of people want to be in the film now, and we've all, we've been shot everybody, damn near. There's a couple of other people we might get. Uh, a lot of the New York cats are reaching out to me, so we're we're gonna see. I I may be back in New York. I might I might be back in New York, but I'll definitely be down in Florida. We'll be in Florida this week. We'll be in um, Texas this week, possibly Atlanta. Um, so we're getting everything together. We're, we're getting this stuff together. We're getting it together, man. And then this is this is the documentary. Where is DJ Hollywood? Yeah, I would like to talk to Hollywood. Yeah, I'm looking like a lot of these, um, you know, some of the pioneers. We can't find them. They're around, but um, you know, we can't find them. Um. But anyway, listen. Yes, DJ Faze is in the film. Yes, we we been had Faze. Yeah, we we yeah, Faze is in the film. Yes, he is. We got Faze early on. I never got in touch with Angie Stone. Angie Stone sent me. I, I hit her up on Instagram. She sent me, I guess, some of her management's number or email, and I emailed them, and they never hit back. Hit Angie Stone up again. Let her know we're trying to holler at her. Let her know. Um. Central Florida, be like Orlando, Tampa area, Central Florida. I'd be in that area. Where my Florida people. But yeah, if you guys, my, my filmmakers out there, you got a red package, man, y'all holler at me and let's do some business. All right. Who is this we got here? Uh, who is this? Um, come down to St. Petersburg. Okay. Okay, look, look. So tonight we're talking about bootlegs getting their wake up call. And these bootlegs think it's all sweet until they get demonetized, the white supremacists pull the rug from under them, then they want to get emotional and cry foul. Now, your boy from Fresh and Fit, Myron, Myron has. 
And, and the fresh and fit guys, they've been sitting up here pandering to the alt-right and doing their little anti-black shtick. You know, they figured that's a great way to come up. That's a great way to make a quick buck just jumping out there, being on some anti-black shtick. That's what Billy Porter was doing because this goes, I'm not just going to put it on the, the right. The left-wingers do it too. Billy Porter sat up here denigrating black society because he was getting a couple of crumbs flicked to him from the dominant society. Now the strike has gone down and he's blaming some of his financial situations on the Hollywood strike, but it's really, they weren't really booking him for a lot of stuff anyway. They just parade him around the red carpet and um, treat him like a mascot and then have him say something crazy about black society and then pat him on the head and throw him a couple of shillings. So now that his money's dried up, Zaddy divorced him. He's crying the blues and trying to blame it on the strike because he has nowhere else to go. See, when you become a bootleg and then you alienate the black audience and you're a black person, white society, they leave you out there hanging. You have nowhere else to go. You see? That's why you don't allow them to make you alienate the, uh, the black audience. Because see, a lot of people, they understand that these folks have a deep contempt for black society, particularly foundational black American society. A lot of people have contempt for black society who's black. And you think that you're going to go out here and just be a professional bootlick, but that doesn't work. And then when white society yanks that carpet from under you, then you want to try to mosey over here with us and try to say, oh, Lord, racism is crazy, ain't it? No, 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 we're not going to do that. Yes, Lord Jamar is in the documentary. Of course he's in it. So Myron, he's up here singing the blues now because all the bootlicking that they do, they've been demonetized on YouTube. They've done... They just went over the top with the boot licking. All right. Now here's Myron. Here's a click, a quick clip of him upset about the demonetization. All right. Hold on. Let's take a quick listen to Myron. Fair use, fair use. Hold on. Saving children, right? That was great. But saving you guys is better. Uh-oh. And he why why he have on some hoochie daddy shorts? Why why this dude got on them hoochie daddy shorts, dude? This tether. So now he walked off the set to cry. He walked off the set to literally cry because they've been demonetized. So understand, they know that if they want to get an audience and get money through hate views. Sit up here and denigrate black society. Bring on the, the anti-black races and just spew all of these little stereotypical um, quips at us. Now that that little money has dried up and YouTube has yanked the plug from under him, what is he going to do? Yeah? What is he going to do? Well, with them shorts, look like you might have to go out here and start slinging bussy. You got the shorts for him, Myron. You might as well hit the boy track. You might as well go on and throw a wig on and hit the trans track and make the money and don't let the money make you. <laughs> How you going to walk off like a biatch and cry in your WNBA shorts? This nigga had on some L.A. Spark shorts. About to run off and cry like a biatch. Man up. <laughs> Pull yourself up by your bussy straps. Boy, you need to get with Billy Porter and get a little support group. <laughs> you see? You might have to start an OnlyFans. Do what other biatches do to make ends meet. You know? You might have to slide them hoochie daddy shorts to the side and let Zaddy see what you're working with. 
Lord. Boy, that bootlick wake-up call is a mug, ain't it? Yeah, he had on some Daisy Dukes. He had on Somalian Daisy Dukes. <laughs> no, some Sudanese booty shorts. <laughs> the the It smells like Dookie and Injera. <laughs> this nigga had on some Sudanese booty shorts. Boy, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He looks like he plays for the Sudanese female track team for the Olympics. Boy, if you don't stop, Myron. But boy, that bootlick wake-up call is not a joke. It always comes. Y'all learn the hard way. We try to tell you tethers. Y'all can sit there and try to throw shots at us all you want, but we understand we're codified enough to not fall for the trick bag of the white supremacists. That's why we ain't running around crying. When they do something, if they mess with the money, we don't trip. We got each other. We know how to um, um, kick it with each other and do business with each other. So we're good. You see? He's crying because he has nowhere to go. He's he's like, oh, Lord. Oh, my God. Am I going to have to go? Am I going to get deported? Am I going to have to go back to Sudan? He's panicking. Yeah? When these folks can't bootlick no more, they don't know what to do. They don't have nobody. They, you got a broke-ass family. You can't depend on them. You damn sure can't come around us. You can't come around us. The Foundation of Black, you cannot come around us. All that Sam Bowen you doing, wearing clan robes, you know you better not bring your ass around us. So, oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh God. The white boys that you've been sucking up to, the alt-right, they're not going to give you nothing. Yeah. They ain't about to break nothing off for you. So we about to see Myron driving a lift in them same booty shorts. <laughs> oh, he's going to be hitting the lift app pretty soon. No? Yeah, we expect it. If they do something with the money, we don't trip. All right, man, give me my unemployment check. All right, let me get that unemployment check and um, I'm going to holler. So we already know, we already expect it. We already know there's going to be some kind of flim flam going on with these folks. We don't even trip. We ain't running off crying. Somebody say they ain't, they going to mess with our money. We, oh, no. <laughs> we ain't crying. Yeah. No, no, no. We don't trip on that. But the thing is, what he's going to probably do now, he's going to probably just go full Sambo and start going directly for the, the Fox News crowd. That's what he's going to start doing. That's what Sage Steele is doing. All right. Sage Steele, the infamous bedwench from ESPN. She got laid off after all that mammying. She was mammying and Samboing it up, bedwenching it up, letting these people yank on her hair and all of this stuff. Remember? And still got laid off from from ESPN and all of those other places. You did. So Sage Steele, you know, they she had a lawsuit going. Hold on, what what they say in the Hollywood Reporter? Yeah, she had a, a lawsuit. Oh, she was crying foul because she tried to be slick. She tried to go overboard with her mammying. Okay. How much did they give her? How much did they give Sage Steele? Okay, so they gave her some kind of payout. Okay, but they, they let her go. So Sage Steele, this is um, last week, leaving ESPN after settling lawsuit. She sued ESPN last year, claiming it violated her free speech over comments she made regarding the COVID vaccine and Obama. So she thought she was going to get some brownie points by dumping on Obama. And they used that as their excuse to get rid of her, which they wanted to get her out of there anyway. They get tired of their bed winches and bootlicks. Um, she said the the she was on um, Jay Cutler's um, podcast. She said the vaccines mandate sick are sick and they're scared of me. She said um, she discussed Obama identifying as black in the U.S. I'm like, well, congratulations to the president. That's his thing. I think it's fascinating. Consider his dad 
was nowhere to be found, but his white mom and grandma raised him. But hey, do you, I'm going to do me. So she was bed winching it up to the very end. She was bed winching it up to the end and they ended up firing her little old bed winching ass. Then she got a lawsuit. So now the left, they ain't really rocking with her. So now she's already, she's already pandering to the, the right wingers now. She's already pandering to them. Hold on, where's that? She's where's that? Where's that? Where's that? She's already pandering to the right wingers. Right here, she's gonna be on Megan Kelly's show. She's trying to do some stuff with Megan Kelly. So she was like, for years, I've been called a sellout because I identify as biracial or that I'm not black enough. For all those biracial kids out. Now, now let me let me unpack that for a minute. Notice the criticism is that black people. The truth is, you're not white enough. You're not accepted in white society, but she doesn't criticize white society. You're not accepted by white society like that. But notice the criticism isn't for them. And she knows that. So the criticism is black people. Well, they don't consider me black enough. For all those biracial kids out there, I pray that you don't wait as long as I did to realize that you don't have to accept that hypocritical BS. You're perfect the way you are and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Thank you, Megan Kelly, for allowing me to share this. Ma'am, stop. Ma'am, ain't nobody tripping on you because you're biracial, man. You are a mammy bootlick. You're a bed-winching bootlick who sit around white people and you try to take shots at black people every chance you get. And then when they dump on you and throw you under the bus, then, then you want to go file lawsuits. Yeah. You still trying to blame us. And it's the white people throwing your ass off jobs. Yeah. Boy, these bed-winches and bootlegs, boy, they get a wake-up call. And there's another bed-winch. I saw a random bed winch on TikTok. She was up here talking about the white men she dated. And well, we got a lot of folks in here. And she realized that a lot of the white men who date black women like her, many of them are kind of racist. Like, duh. She realized that some of them are kind of racist, which is what we've been saying for years. Hold on one second. Let me find that clip of her. This woman right here. Hold on one second. All right, this is another wake-up call. Racist white men who date black women. Oh, my. And before y'all come at me in the comments, <laughs> this is a personal testimony as someone who has dated outside of my race. Plenty, okay? A lot of y'all, a lot of y'all, like what you see when you date a black woman you you love the beauty of black women which i can't blame you you love the aesthetic you love how different we are okay okay let me let me let me okay okay let me let me help y'all out for a minute let, let me help y'all out with that narrative because a lot of y'all I, I i broke that down years ago let me let me tell you what the real deal. Yeah, she the the wig. Uh, I already know. Okay. These white dudes are not with you because they think you're just so beautiful. You are. Many of you are very lovely, but they, that's not why. That's not why. That's not why. And I, I broke this stuff down before. They're like, oh, these white men, they just love me. All these white men, they just want to be with me because they're just my, my aesthetic. They so I'm so beautiful. And you're sitting there with a $3 wig. No, I, I broke this down before. A lot of these suspected white supremacist males, when they are, when they have a black fetish, when they have a black fetish, it's called slumming. They call it slumming for a reason. When they have a black fetish, not because they just appreciate black beauty, in their mind, it's like some sort of self 
debasing fetish for them. They feel like they're soiling themselves by being with somebody of a lower status. Iceberg Slim talked about that in his book. Iceberg Slim broke that down. Back in the 1930s, he talked about how a lot of the white tricks would go down to the hood to get with the women. And the women in their minds thought that, okay, the, the white men just love them so much and they just, ooh, they just couldn't, can't help themselves. And Iceberg was like, y'all don't realize these, these white tricks feel like they're soiling themselves. They feel like they're, they're rubbing filth on themselves. It's like a fetish to them. That's why they do it. That's why when they get with you, everything is very hostile and passive aggressive. It's a fetish. It's a debasing fetish. I am a white man of the higher echelon status of this society, and I'm with a lowly person who has a low status. So I'm slumming, I'm ghetto gagging. That's why the sex and the interaction is always debauchery and it's always um, filthy. It's always the degenerate thing. They want to call you names and do all types of weird shit to you. You understand what I'm saying? White women too. You know, white women too, by the way. I want folks to understand that part of the game too. These white women... The white women think that it's a King Kong fetish, Negro. I mean, let me put it on the brothers, too, because brothers are like, oh, these white women can't keep their hands off this big old dick. White women be having the King Kong fetish, too. All right? Getting with you, Negro, sometimes with the white women, it's like having sex with a horse. All right? Literally a horse. There's videos of white women getting into bestiality. This just to do certain things, just to try some shit. You know, I'm, I'm having sexual relations with an animal. You, you, you know, they're still in control of the animal. That's how they look at it. That's why some of them white women, they're in college and they have all of that bestial sex and they're very submissive. But when they get older, they turn into some of the, the main Karens out there. I want y'all to understand that too. Black folks get real confused when you get into sexual relationships with, with, with people in the dominant white society. Y'all don't understand. It's to them, it's like I'm having sex with a wild animal. They don't, they don't mind doing that. Yeah, because it's a fetish. You're, you're not on equal footing with these people. You're not. You know? All right, now let me play the rest of this woman here. I just wanted to stop it to break that part of the game down. All right? All right, here we go. You love our bodies. But the problem is a lot of y'all don't even like black people. Including you. Including you. That means you. They don't like you while they're having sex with you. Yeah, let's talk about it. Bro, where are my black women at that have dated white men? Because y'all know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. The black women who have literally experienced being called the N-word. Yeah. By the white man that they're dating. Yeah. Let's talk about <laughs> white men that have literally had children by black women. But can't stand black people. Yeah. Yeah. Like slave owners. That's not new. Thomas Jefferson had a whole bunch of black kids and put them all on the plantation to work and then wrote a book about how inferior black people were. That means you too, ma'am. You're preaching to the choir. We know this. You just realizing that your, your bed wench wake up call is just kind of seeping in slow. The fact that you had to go through all that to wake up we ain't going through all that to wake up. We already know. All right. Hold on. Why do y'all do that? Because they're it, white supremacists, ma'am. It honestly, it's it. I'm discombobulated because make it make sense. It makes sense. They're white supremacists. Let, hold up. Let me do this. 
do some math real quick. Yeah, it's not adding up. Because how are you going to date somebody and then just pretend the whole time like you really mess with them and fuck with them and the whole time you racist as hell can't stand me? True Duh. story. Yeah, I was telling you, somebody, yeah, somebody in the chat said she can't be FBA. She must be Caribbean or something. Truth be told, I don't think she's FBA, to be honest. To be that surprised, if you that confused, I'm getting Tether vibes. To be honest, I'm get, I am getting Tether vibes for her to be this damn slow, and she's still acting shocked. We're not shocked. We, we've been around these people for the last couple of hundred years, so we're not shocked at this. She's still up there, huh? Why y'all be doing that? I'm discombobulated. It ain't and no, Uncle Fru, how you having sex with me and don't like me? Because you're a bedwench. That's what bedwenches are for. Sex and no emotional attachment to them. Damn. Hold on. I have a friend who's half white. She says her dad is a stone cold racist yes when i say this white man hates it that his daughter identifies as a black woman explain that to me yeah it's called white supremacy sweetie oh yeah she's hurt she's hurt she gets it but boy she's hurt please i want to know get in the comments and explain it to me because y'all been doing this shit since since slavery and even before then yeah because we haven't forgotten we we ain't forgot obviously you did because you sitting up here with your divestment wig and you're very confused for no reason so y'all need to stop if y'all really aren't down for black culture and black people stop dating us because it's actually very disrespectful Oh, okay, okay. That that's enough. <laughs> stop dating us. You stop dating them. What do you mean stop dating? You you make a choice. Stop being a bad wench. <laughs> yeah, she must be new. I'm getting tether vibes like a mug for her to be that damn confused. Lord, you can't be that goofy. Shout out to everybody new that's coming in the room. We got a lot of new folks in the room. Shout out to everybody in the room. We are here. I started a little late, but damn it, I am in here. I'm in here. We in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all know, I, they were, we're talking about the flash mobs that were robbing stores and all of that stuff. Um, they were blaming black people for these flash mobs, robbing stores. And I, there was a flash mob at the um, Topanga Mall and... There was some other flash mobs running around here in Southern California. They're going to sit here and try to blame black people. I say, hey, man, these are not black people doing these smash and grab robberies. These are not black people. These are clearly Hispanic. Because all of the people were covered up with um, black outfits and hoodies. And you couldn't really see their skin. But just their body language and just the areas that they were in. I thought, these are Hispanics, dude. Come on. And the white supremacists online were going out of their way to try to blame black people. No, ain't no black people. These areas, I know for, these aren't black people in these areas. And large groups of black people, number one, are not going to get together and go that far out to hit a lick. Also, because it, it, taking all of that much time to get, you're not going to go out of your way to go to Glendale or go to Topanga if you from South Central somewhere to hit a lick and then leave and get your ass caught in traffic. All right, so you can get caught so them helicopters can get your ass. Just I, just the, the, the practicality of the heist, all right? You're not going to come down from, because the, the black people, if you got 30 black folks running in a store, that means they all came from the same neighborhood, which would be South Central somewhere or Lancaster and they're not coming all the way from there. You're not coming all the way from no damn South Central LA to go to Topanga or Glendale so you can get caught in traffic after you hit a damn lick, which is dumb. 
So the people are from the area. So they're clearly Hispanic cats. So now they didn't call some of the leaders of some of these flash mobs. And sure enough, all right. First flash mob arrest in Americana at Brand Mall robbery. LAPD forms retail robbery task force. So a couple of Hispanics. Isaac Ramirez and Brianna Jimenez. All right. So here's some of the first people they got. Like we said, these are not black people doing these licks, but we get blamed. Just like up in the Bay, those bipping crews, those cats out there bipping them cars, all those bipping crews up there in the Bay bipping them cars and stealing. Those are Hispanics and Asians. Most of those bipping crews are Hispanic and Asian up there in the Bay. Yeah, you got a couple of brothers in the mix. You got a couple. But from what I've seen, most of those bipping crews in the Bay Asians and Hispanic dudes. Yeah. So this thing where they're just going to blame us for everything. No, we ain't playing that game. We're not going to play that game at all. Yeah. We are not playing that game with these folks. Everybody's going to hold their own nuts. You're not going to blame your criminality and your robberies on us. We're not letting that happen, ladies and gentlemen. That We're not going to play that game. Um. Did you guys see your boy Eric Adams out there in New York talking about he want to be like Gandhi? Look, look at your boy Eric Adams. This is Eric Adams talking about how he want to be like Gandhi. Hold on. Let me play this about Eric Adams. Hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. Worship Gandhi. We must practice Gandhi. So I'm Gandhi-like. I think like Gandhi. I act like Gandhi. I want to be like Gandhi. I want it to be the modern-day Ramayana and say that we can lead against the forces of evil and take us to the next direction on who we are. So I am happy to be Rosh. Okay, so he's up here talking about he wants to be Gandhi and he wants to be the new Gandhi. Well, Gandhi hated black people. Mahatma Gandhi was a hardcore anti-black racist who hated black people and for years said extremely negative things about black people. Gandhi wasn't worth a damn. And running around talking about you want to be like Gandhi, that says a lot about you, Adam. Eric Adams, that says a lot about you, Eric Adams. So you're speaking truth. Because you are not doing anything for the black people of New York. And I just left the beautiful city of New York. And when I say the black people, particularly the foundation of black Americans, you're not really doing anything for them out there. Yeah. Man. And I love New York. Shout out to New York. New York is a beautiful city. But Eric Adams, you up here prioritizing all of these non-citizens over the citizens of New York giving all of the resources to these non-citizens, these people who are flooding the zone out there. Yeah, yeah, Gandhi was no good. Gandhi was trash. Yes, he was. We're not playing the Gandhi game. Ain't nobody rocking with no damn Gandhi. Yeah? And listen, when we try to make moves, you know, we always get sabotaged when we try to make moves. Because um, as we see in the music industry, a lot of funny style stuff is going on. A lot of the, the ratchet stuff that's being pushed, you know, that's being deliberately pushed. And when we have some people within the community who try to kind of take control of certain media entities, boy, you know, the dominant society, you know, they, they get skeptical. Now, y'all heard about Tyler Perry and like it was Tyler Perry, Byron Allen and some other people trying to buy BET. That was a whole big thing. Tyler Perry and those guys were trying to buy BET. Now, some people will say, well, Tyler Perry has a bunch of lowbrow entertainment or whatever, but Tyler Perry is still a foundational black American. And they understand that, you know, Tyler Perry, you know, he might do some of the lowbrow stuff, but if you get in a certain position of media power, that can flip at any time. You know, they know we can flip. 
You know? Yeah, they know we can flip. So Tyler Perry was trying to buy BT and Paramount. They were like, ah, uh, nah. Tyler Perry will not be buying BET. Paramount decides to keep it. They were like, ah, oh, not so fast. Entertainment mogul Tyler Perry, alongside a cohort of prominent contenders, including um, Sean Combs and businessman Byron Allen, has found disappointment in their pursuit to acquire BET, the network. The outcome transpired after Paramount resolved not to proceed with the sale. Man, um, duh, duh, duh. Paramount, the company at the center of this decision, reportedly communicated their verdict to the bidders earlier this week. Mm. Man, they were like, ah, oh, no, 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 no. You Negroes think you're slick. Yeah, yeah, some of you have been doing our bidding, but nah, you guys might get together and wake up and start putting some stuff that's going to wake the community up. Oh, yeah, the Bill Cosby thing all over again. We start talking about buying something. All they get to do in the corporate redlining. Ah. Uh, let me tell you something. They, look, they know what they're doing. They know that the, the white powers that be are pushing this aggressive, minstrel-like nonsense at us. Yeah? They know these people are pushing minstrel-like nonsense at us. And again, the only thing they show constructive in the white media when it comes to black people, they will show the non-FBA people constructive to a certain degree. And boy, they got the non-FBA people trying to tether our stuff like crazy. Did y'all see Burna Boy? He was on, on one of those shows and let me play that clip of Burner Boy showing y'all his new dance. Uh, he's showing y'all the new dance he got called the Afro Moonwalk. Now, this is fair use, fair use, fair use. Let me play this clip. This is fair use. Burner Boy showing his new dance. This is the new dance, guys, called the Afro Moonwalk. Hold on. Hold on. All right. All right. All right. So yeah, he's showing the new dance, guys. Yeah, I do it. Yeah, okay. All right. Oh God, that is so new. Okay. Okay. <laughs> now. Family, we've had about four or five different variations of that same dance. In the 90s, that was the running man. Out there in Memphis, that's like the Memphis juke, juking dance. Man, we didn't had different variations of that dance. Um, where is this? The video of Usher doing that dance. Um, let me, let me, I'm not going to play the audio. Oh, 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 oh. Let me just play the visuals. Uh oh. Well, this is Usher. All right, doing the same dance. Hold on, look at Usher, our brother Usher. Doing the same dance, hold on. Same dance. That's a variation of the running man. That's them in Memphis. Look at my Memphis cats out there. This is that Memphis juking dance. We've been doing variations of that dance, man. So when I say the tethering is real, when I say the tethering is real, the tethering is real. Brother getting it too. <laughs> Man. MC Hammer did it. Man, so it's, somebody said it's the bush meat bounce. Yeah, it's like a variation of the crip walk to a certain degree. Dude. And these folks will sit up here and talk about what culture we don't have. See, that's the thing that kills me. I don't, I don't trip on if you want to dance and do some of the dances we, that's fine. If you want to do some of the dances we do, that's fine. But then in the same breath, you will turn around, burn a boy, and some of these other people will say, oh, these FBA niggas, they don't have a culture. Oh, they don't have a culture. 
and you doing all of our stuff, singing over all of our FBA beats, some of our old FBA hits, dressing in our FBA style, but then say, we ain't got a culture. You're doing everything culturally FBA. So that's the thing that, 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 that's very disrespectful and you got to be checked on that. You know, y'all get stuff and then call it something else. This is, this is the camel crip walk. No, no, you're just doing the running man, brother. Yeah, he's doing the Joloff juking. No, and it's not Joloff juking. You're just doing some old FBA dances, brother. Yeah, and we got to call y'all because when we go over there, we go to Africa, we do something, boy, y'all want credit. That's why when Beyonce and all those people go get some African dances, who, who is she? She thinks she's the queen of Africa. Who is this Beyonce? She, no. Y'all get real mad. And so speaking of Beyonce, boy, the um, her war to, world tour is killing the game. Um, she's getting, on, getting it in with that tour. When are they coming to L.A.? Or when is Beyonce's tour coming to L.A.? Shout out to Beyonce and Little Blue Ivy. I love seeing Little Blue Ivy do her thing. Blue Ivy does her little thing. She's getting so much better and comfortable in her dance moves. Little Blue Ivy goes out there real innocent waving. Hey, hey, y'all. Little Blue Ivy goes out there killing it. You know, she's a little shy little girl, beautiful little girl. And she goes out there. Very innocent. How old is Blue Ivy? Like 11? Uh, it's September? September. Okay. Is it September? September 1st? Of, okay. Okay. I'm going to have to holler at some of Beyonce's people because I know it's probably sold out. Where's Beyonce's staff? Somebody works secure? Y'all holler at me and give me a ticket for that. I got to get up in there. Somebody from the staff, because I know some of, some of y'all know me. Holler at me. Some of Beyonce's folks, somebody from the tour, y'all holler at me and give me a pass for the September joint. I want to go up there because I, 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 I've been enjoying the clips. Yeah, Blue, they, have, they were trying to criticize Lil Blue. They were trying to criticize Baby Girl because, you know, early on, you know, she's young, you know, so she's, you know, she's getting into the thing. Well, she's in there now. Blue Blue Ivy goes out there and shows out. You know? She goes out there waving. Hey y'all, then get the going, <laughs> get the wave in the blue hand. <laughs> Hello, last beat. I'm like, go on, blue. That's what I want to see. <laughs> I want to see little blue Ivy's ass out there. I'm gonna be out there grooving with her. Go blue. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing the moves in the audience right with her. <laughs> I'm gonna be rocking that shit with blue Ivy. <laughs> I'm going to be right in the audience with her ass. Grooving. That's who I want to see. Get me a goddamn ticket to the show, y'all. All my people on the tour, get me a ticket. I don't want to be out there doing the Blue Ivy dance. Yeah? And is Beyonce all right? Because Beyonce, I'm looking at some of the clips, Beyonce ain't moving around like she used to. How, is, is our sister okay? Because I'm looking at the clips and Beyonce ain't move. She's not moving around. Because, you know, Beyonce, her old tour is Beyonce be jumping around and whoop -de -whoop. she's all over the place. Um, I'm not, with with some of the clips I'm seeing, you know, she got people kind of helping her, walking her, walking Beyonce, they, they're walking her around and da, 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 da. she's not moving around so much. She had foot, oh, okay. She broke her leg? Did she break her leg? She had foot surgery. Oh, okay. I knew something was going on. I know she's in her 40s. I know that. I know that. I know that. She had foot surgery. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay. She ain't that old. 40 is not old. I mean, damn. She had foot surgery. Okay. That's what it is. Okay, okay. I knew something was going on. Okay, that makes sense. No, 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 this isn't a criticism. No, that's not a criticism of our sister. I love Beyonce, man, I love her. But I'm like, 
I, I've been I've been a fan of Beyonce for years. So Beyonce, you know, Beyonce be all over the place. And this tour, I'm noticing she she'll be standing in one place and she's just not moving around a lot. And I'm like, what's okay, what's going on with our sister? And even y'all y'all talking about her age, y'all act like that woman is 60. She's not that old. So the sir, the foot thing makes sense. That makes sense. And I understand she's getting older. But yeah, Beyonce, just a couple of years ago, Beyonce was still rocking out. She shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, she's doing her thing. But I, I noticed she just wasn't moving around a lot. Because look, Beyonce's ass, man, Beyonce would be on stage. Beyonce would fall down and get up. Beyonce is a performer, dude. Y'all saw some of them old shows. Beyonce would fall down a whole flight of stairs and then finish the song. You understand? Nigga, Beyonce, man, Beyonce would be on stage falling, tripping, getting her hair weave caught in fans. Remember when she got her weave caught? She was singing and her weave got caught in a damn fan. And she didn't stop singing. Beyonce head was caught in that fan. Beyonce was up there like, shit. Halo. 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 <laughs> Beyonce don't be giving up. She does, she does not give up, man. But yeah, Beyonce would fall down a whole, <laughs> she'd be on a high ass cliff of stairs and walk down and fall down and get back up. I don't think you're ready for this jail and, and, and go right back into it. Um, and remember when she was on tour, with, when she was with Destiny's Child, you think Beyonce, she's, she can be a little clumsy, but Beyonce can kind of work it. But Michelle's ass, you talk about clumsy. Michelle's little old thin ass, and I love Michelle. Shout out to Michelle. Michelle's ass used to fall and trip all the time. And you ain't even singing lead. How the fuck you falling down and you singing background? <laughs> Michelle ass would fall down for nothing. You, you in the background. We need a soldier in here. Whoops. How you fall down and you singing background? <laughs> You're not even dancing lead. You falling down for nothing. <laughs> Girl, Michelle be falling her ass down all the time. Yeah, when they felt when Michelle fell on 106 in Park and Beyonce stepped over her ass was the funniest thing ever. They walked out there and Michelle ass immediately fell down. Beyonce. <laughs> I'm looking for some dudes getting high tonight. Move, bitch. I need a soldier in here. Where they at? If y'all don't get her ass a Nutri-Grain bar with her little thin, frail, falling down ass, Michelle would just fall for nothing. Poor thing. Them, them little frail legs and them heels. You know them little skinny girls can't rock heels. Beyonce be dancing and flipping in heels. You know, Michelle ass be like, what, can I wear some flats? No. Everybody got to have on some heels. Beyonce and Kelly got on heels, bitch. You got to have on some heels, too. Damn. So she done put on her church heels and can't walk in them and her ass falling. <laughs> then they had to have just, they got some of the dancers to hold their ass up. Remember some of those shows when, when Michelle had to do her part, they would just get some background dancers to hold her up. So they're like, bitch, just don't fall. We'll hold you up. After all of the darkness and sadness, just don't fall down. Don't let her walk. Shout out to Michelle. We love you, Michelle. I know people were getting on her for bed winching with that white man. Shout out to Michelle. Michelle was like, why everybody calling me a bed winch? People calling me a bed winch? She was mad because people were clowning her for that, that weird white man she was dating. Man, but I, hey, get me a ticket for the show. I want to go. And that September, that's in a few weeks. 
That's in a few weeks, guys. So shit, I want to go. I want to go. I'm going to have my Blue Ivy shirt on. Man, that's going to be popping. And by the way, y'all get your Root Work package at rootworkstyle.com. Rootworkstyle.com. Speaking of singers, poor, poor Britney Spears. Britney's getting a, a divorce from her dude. Britney Spears is getting a divorce, so she had a divorce party. So Britney put this up. Britney was like, yeah, she enjoys a night out after following divorce news. I put my green dress on and show up at my friends. I invite my favorite boys over and played all night. So uh, did they run a train on you, sister? What, what happened, Britney? Uh, did a train pop off? Lord, Brittany, that is not a flex. Having a bunch of dudes over with their shirt off, kicking it with you. That's not a flex. That's not going to get you another dude. Yeah. Poor thing. And Brittany with them white boots. Crazy as cat shit. Lord, but yeah, the dude, I think her, her husband thought he was going to get a bag where they had him sign a prenup, so he ain't going to get nothing. Look, look, let me tell you something. Somebody's going to mack up on Britney. Britney's going to fuck around and get one of these niggas from the Bay, one of these Oakland brothers. <laughs> these niggas going to spit some ism at her ass and get that whole estate transferred in his name. Britney out here acting crazy. She's going to get crazy with the right one. She's going to get crazy with one of these niggas from the town with a mouthpiece on them. And a nigga gonna get the whole bag out her crazy ass. She need to go sit down. Yeah. Man, man, man. But yeah, go to rootworkstyle.com to get the root work package, ladies and gentlemen. The root work deodorant package, or you can just get the deodorant itself. The package comes with the root work, um, the mysteries of the root book, comes with the Boom, your choice of the coconut butter or the, oh shit, I'm dropping it, the natural vanilla. Very good smelling deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. People love the Root Work deodorant. People are reordering like crazy, ladies and gentlemen. People absolutely love it. Speaking of somebody who need deodorant, did y'all see this, this white woman here? Some of these people, boy, they, they have black folks living rent-free in their brains. This white woman right here, um, she I guess she was getting criticized because she was wearing dreads or locks. This woman here, and she was up here talking about how black women are hating on her locks. And look, this woman got these underarms. She has a bunch of hair under her arms. Oh, goodness. So she's up here talking about how the black women are hating on her. Hold on. Listen to this. Listen to this. Of course, it's always the black women with weaves who want to hate on my beautiful, freeform, curly dreadlocks. It's like, no, no. Bye, Shaquandra. Of course, it's... Okay, okay. Ma'am... I, I, okay, what what Caribbean nigga is laying up with this woman? Some Caribbean dude. This woman and got with some Caribbean dude somewhere. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to get my Caribbean brothers. Y'all done pump this woman's heads up. You pump this woman's head up. This nasty, filthy, dirty tooth woman. Her teeth look like corn niblets. She got underarm hair. Her hair looks lice infested, lice infested and matted. She got mayo matted locks. This is this woman is a pastafarian. She's a pasta a pastafarian, okay? Y'all done pumped up this damn pastafarian to make her think that she can kind of take jabs at somebody looking like she looks. She looks like she needs a whole vat of root work deodorant. Ma'am, that doesn't look good. Your hair doesn't look good. Nobody's hating on you. Um, the Shaquandas, you don't, you cannot hold a candle to any of the Shaquandas. You, you, 
You're not it, ma'am. You look like you have about three or four different flavors of stank on you. You look like you smell like wet dog, piss, vaginal fluids, and camel meat. So these filthy suspected white supremacists thinking that sisters are hating on them, please get over yourself. Really get over your damn self. You know, stop it. It's, I don't know where she's from, but she can stay there. You know? Anyway, y'all, listen, go get the movie American Maroon at American-Maroon.com if you have not seen it. Um, again, we're still working on the new hip hop documentary that's coming. This thing is going to be phenomenal. You dig? It's going to be phenomenal. So you guys stay tuned for that. We're still in the process of filming. Again, all of my, my videographers out there, if you have a red camera package, like the Red Dragon, things of that nature, y'all holler at me because um, we need some secondary cameras in some of the locations we're going to, particularly if you're on the East Coast or in the South, Florida, Georgia, around that area, y'all holler at me if you can travel and if you got your shit together. And um, again, family, Go to rootworkstyle.com. My SoCal people, y'all be safe out here. Waiting on the tropical storm slash earthquake slash flood to pass us by. So um, I think we might be open at the museum tomorrow. We might be open. I got to, we'll, we'll see. We, we might be open. So y'all bring your kids to the museum tomorrow. I know the kids out of school. Bring them to the museum tomorrow. All right. If the, the traffic ain't too bad, bring the kids to the museum tomorrow. Give them something to do. All right? Anyway, y'all, that's been it. Oh, yeah, hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. You want information about the museum. And plus, we're going to have another event around September 16th at the museum. Give me some ideas, guys. I'm thinking about having a singing contest this time. We had a rap contest. I'm thinking about having a singing contest. All right? At the museum. The rap contest uh, is bringing in too many gangsters. But a singing contest, well, shit, a singing contest, we might have a bunch of singing gangsters there too, so you never know. But I'm thinking about having a singing contest. We do a singing contest this time, along with our comedy show. So I'm kind of kicking that idea around. So anyway, September 16th, that's probably when the next event is happening at the Hidden History Museum. Anyway, guys, I'm about to hear.